Okay, so yeah, uh, I'd like to issue a disclaimer at the top of the episode. This podcast is not in any way affiliated with the independent campaign of Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, You cannot hold anything said on this podcast against the Jeremy Corbyn campaign or hold him responsible for any of our opinions or views. They do not represent the Jeremy Corbyn for Islington North campaign in any capacity. And I would like to add as well that we are actively not inviting anybody officially representing any campaign that we support on the podcast throughout this election, not just because uh, we don't think we'd be able to get many of them, but because we don't want them to be uh, falsely associated with us in the gutter press and to have our hilarious jokes and witty repartee uh, used against them um, again in the gutter press or indeed in in a court of law. So It's a concrete fact that the only political candidate we have sent people directly to campaign for to the duration of this podcast is uh, independent candidate Mike Gapes in 2019. Uh, which we, we, we now denounce. Yeah, that was... A, we, we supported him fully at the time, but this, that was a mistake. I read in The Guardian yesterday, he's just a fucker. He just left the party just pathetically. He should have stayed in the party. Mm-hmm. He wasn't standing up to anti-Semitism at all. That's yeah. what the uh, allies of the Labour leadership think of uh, Mike Gapes and the other members of Change UK. But maybe we'll return we- to weak, that. Weak Mike, they've been calling him. Weak Mike, Mike. Uh, uh, watered down milk. Yeah, That's yeah. What they the tragedy say. of Austria. Yeah. <laughs> so we we have absolutely no affiliation with the Jeremy Corbyn campaign, with the Andrew Feinstein campaign, with any other uh, campaign that we support. Rishi Sunak's campaign yeah. against Tom Wilson, for example, uh, in whatever that constituency is. But. Um, <laughs> Uh, but espe- especially we have no um, we have no affiliation with the Jeremy Corbyn campaign with that being said if tomorrow a tweet appears on Jeremy Corbyn's timeline in which he thanks Brian Eno for his endorsement I will be by tomorrow it will probably mean yesterday by the time we put this out yeah if if not later but uh, at some, <laughs> we're, we're, you're not going to get this you... edited in the next 70 minutes Jack <laughs> if by the time be recorded if by the time you are listening to this, Jeremy Corbyn has said something like, thank you to music legend Brian Eno for the support, posting the endorsement video that Brian Eno posted the other day that has unfortunately, uh, I'm sure through an honest mistake, been yet to be acknowledged by Jeremy Corbyn's official Twitter account. You can know that uh, somebody was, was behind the scenes there pulling the strings and it wasn't Mr. Seamus Milne. Yeah, maybe one of the weasels in the Labour Party when he was leader was like really into oblique strategies or something. He's just like, fuck, you know, I hate him. <laughs> I'll, I'll take his support, but I won't acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> these these stoats. Blair, you Blairite stoats. <laughs> we're gonna be t- we're gonna be uh, running through the names of a lot of Blairite stoats today. You've, you've sat down and we've started this before before the bit we'll actually put in the edit. He's like telling me about the noise from my computer, which at this point he's imagining in his head because I've found twenty different ways to make it silent. But I can hear like him just like pouring a drink. <laughs> like, so, so holding what, the microphone right up to verite. the top. <laughs> this, this is a musique concrète. This, this is a, the real world you're listening to. And yet when I do it, or oh, none of this computer music, no, only authentic yeah. instruments and found objects for me. It's not real music. Rockist bastard. Yeah, it's it's um it's just your corporations and corporate <laughs> greed, like starberism. But yeah, we'll be we'll be addressing a lot a lot of um, Starmer supporters today. We'll be um, uh, th- this is what they we call, could probably address what... them all with a single word. Uh... <laughs> Stoats. Yeah, that, that, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, so we'll be talking about a bunch of cunts today. <laughs> Who have we got? We'll be declaring war on a uh, british light entertainment comedy once again yeah. we sort of we declare this war every few years it's like every, every few, few years, episodes come on man e- yeah every, well 
I, I think we ramp it up every few years. It's kind yeah. of like every few years Israel yeah. are like, right, we're going to take a further step towards a genocide. We're yeah. like that, but yeah. it's not innocent civilians who don't deserve it. It's, many, uh, many people it, are comparing us to the state of Israel. That, that's something that happens a lot. <laughs> well, another great uh, legend, yeah. uh, Seinfeld. What was it you were saying earlier about us, Grind? And, oh, uh, God. Seinfeld. Yeah. We're like Seinfeld. No hugging, no learning. All our Patreon funds straight to Israel fundraisers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a good one. <laughs> but no, we're gonna, we're not going to be talking about those American cunts today. Fuck America. Although we are doing what our good friends on Chapo Trap House, who we are now open to have appearing on the show, we do feel that please come that on the show, finally... Felix. Please come on the show. We need that Chapo money. I think that could finally swing the election for Sunak. <laughs> we're going to do today what our good close personal friends at Chapo Trap House would call a duck hunt. We'll be talking about lots of Blairite ducks, the the close relative of the stoat, the, the, uh, I'd say a sort of yeah. a mongoose is like the midpoint between a, a duck and a stoat. Would you agree? I would agree, and I would just like to point out that when we say Blairite ducks... That's actually very different from... I can't find the guy's name now. I need it for a joke. Shit. Right, pretend I haven't made the joke yet. Uh, I like to feed the ducks in the park. It gives me a tremendous sense of uh, personal wealth. Because, you know, it's cool Britannia all over again. I'm getting into the spirit of it. When we say Blairite ducks, we're very specifically saying ducks. So that doesn't necessarily include people like Nick Smith, MP. A sitting duck. No, well, 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 he's a a, a Blairite duck. Something that rhymes with, with duck. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you see? He he was a, a God, a I really I really duck. delivered that joke perfectly. Go me. I I got I got I got it <laughs> within a, a little with a little pause. Like yeah. uh, you know he he was a sitting duck for a certain uh, yeah. noted yes. coxman. <laughs> yeah, he was on the campaign trail today, and no matter how many rooms were available, I'm sure they let him use the chair. <laughs> you know the little chair they have i'm sorry that he's welsh man like it just it's such a gift to me i mean like, I... <laughs> i'm not patriotic on the level that i don't realize there are arseholes in wales the same as there are in england and everywhere else like but you've been you've been launching such a staunch defense of blairite vorg and geffen on our last few episodes <laughs> yeah because he's, he's not welsh, welsh is he <laughs> he's, not... he's a he's a well, no, he, cunt. yeah he's not not Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd never stand for the Cornish, so not having any of that. No, I, I survived Cornwall. <laughs> but yeah, so first off, I guess, I can't talk about him too long because I promised podcasting is praxis that I'll go on there in a few days to... Uh, lay into this cunt so <laughs> nice. we, we just even though it's the main beef i've had today so we got to address it first oh off. yeah yeah we, we, we've covered it before we, well we've, we've built up to it before we've sort of set, set some grievances with him on the podcast in previous years we've been progressively ramping this yeah. up uh, I'm talking, of course, about my bitter feud with Armando Iannucci, yeah. um, which is now finally two-sided. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, For the uh, first time ever God, today, I love he replied you, to me. You finally goaded him into lowering himself to reply, and he completely flubbed it and like set us up for multiple easy dunks on it. It's like, <laughs> it's bare, more concrete I, proof than anything we've theorised or said before, you know. We can say, oh, his later show's shit, but someone might be like, well, I quite liked it, and okay, comedy's subjective. No one liked the space show, Even though they are objectively wrong, like, we can't prove it, but, (laughs) like, (laughs) just stuff like that is the ultimate proof that, like, the Armando Iannucci of the 90s uh, or the early noughties, even if he had fairly shit liberal politics then, which I'm almost certain he did... He would not have set himself up to to, to fall flat on his ass like that. Yeah, I mean, here, here's here's the deal, he's... right? As our our friend Jerry Seinfeld would say, our next guest, since Iannucci went on the trust of a child poverty charity, didn't he? Yeah. Is, is yeah. that is that right? Which do yeah, you know is which it like one? child poverty action group? Let me have a look. Uh, again, I think I think that's right. Generally, fact check this stuff beforehand, but that's, that's not our style, is it? Really? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 
So <laughs> it is, yeah, the Child Poverty Action Group. Yeah, he is, well, there you an go. Official patron of them now. Uh, yeah. So ever since he became a patron of that, I'm sure very worthy organization. I I've sort of um, rededicated my life to replying to everything Armando Inucci tweets about child poverty yeah. to have a go at him. You, you disagree with him. You think it's good. <laughs> to have a go at him for talking about <laughs> child poverty. I think that fewer people should be campaigning against it because it's really not a problem. Those kids need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and develop a little initiative. No, of course, that's not it. I make snide comments about how he didn't support Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I do every time. It's it, it's the same bit every time, because I think it is so egregious that when a Labour leader was elected, uh, one of the primary catalysts for the election of Corbyn was when Harriet Harman whipped Labour MPs to abstain on the two-child benefit cap in Parliament. And all the other Labour leadership candidates, including Andy Burnham, who knew it was the wrong thing to do, did what she said and abstained. And Corbyn didn't. And that fucking day, a poll came out that showed him an absurd amount of points ahead of all the other candidates. And by my recollection, that was my birthday and it was probably (laughs) among the best I've ever had. (laughs) And, uh, you know, anyway, that directly led to Jeremy Corden Jeremy Corbyn getting... uh, I'm sure it wasn't like... uh, (laughs) Jeremy Corden, that's a fucking... Jeremy Corden, fucking hell. That's another (laughs) light entertainment figure. We'll have to see if he uh, deigns to grace the UK with his presence or at least a little endorsement for Sir Keir Starmer's Labour Party. But no, you know, as a result of that, that basically got the Labour leadership race, which was already in the bag for him. You know, it basically Mm -hmm. threw it into Jeremy Corbyn's hands. And it was just... A perfect encapsulation of the very real material issues that led Corbynism to happen and led this movement of a lot of people who are a lot fucking less well off than Armando Inucci, I would say for the most part, to get involved in supporting him. Now, I don't recall Inucci supporting Corbyn in 2017 either, but by 2019 he yeah, was actively I think he was very smearing. quiet about it at first, just didn't say anything either way. I mean, he was a recovering Lib Dem, so he's probably used to just sitting on the fence and saying fuck all and pretending no one notices. But um, he, he did a tweet which was just before the 2019 yeah. election. I think this is in fact the only time that he ever tweeted about child poverty prior to taking on that role at the Child Poverty Action Group, he said something like, what a choice Britain is faced with, anti-Semitism with Labour or child poverty with the Tories. And, you know, it suggested a man comfortable with the latter option, ultimately. Because really, mm-hmm. uh, would Labour have... I don't know, how, how many how many children are in poverty in this country? Like, uh... Oh, God, like, like literally about 40% of them at this point. Yeah. Like, it, is, it, is, it is a crazy amount, and it's been really high for a long time. Obviously, what, continuing what to harm... go up. Since what COVID, harm no, but... would Corbyn have uh, afflicted to uh, a comparable amount of people, even within the Jewish community? Well, uh... If you believe he'd do anything to that community at all, <laughs> would he have, I don't know, made 40 of them 40%. suffer some kind of untold hardship? What was he going to do compared to the concrete fact I mean, this is the thing. of children starving under the Conservatives? Even if you believed every single attack piece on Jeremy Corbyn, every single claim about his anti-Semitic beliefs and stuff. Most of them were insinuations rather than claims, again, because they knew they were on such flimsy ground. But if you believed all of them, there was no credible suggestion that a Corbyn government would implement anti-Semitic policies. The only people that were even claiming that were proper deranged headbangers like Simon Heffer. Oh yeah, he's going to reopen Auschwitz. And to be fair, you had a second wave of people like Stephen Bush who were like, well, we have to respect him. And (laughs) it's offensive not to treat that as a possibility if even one person believes it. Congratulations, Stevie. You've just legitimised every insane anti-Semitic conspiracy theory throughout history so long as one person genuinely believes it. Yeah. You fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a clown that guy is, eh? But yeah, Ian Ucci, what was his little snippy response to me today? Because it wasn't even to one of the tweets, one of the numerous tweets I'd done where I quote tweet him 
people replied to him. It was just to a tweet where I'd, he must have name searched or someone sent it to him where I'd, I'd just been like, I think if we keep the pressure up, we can stop Armando Inucci talking about poverty <laughs> for good. And then with a hashtag, make Armando Inucci talking about poverty history. <laughs> and he replied to it like, only just started, which as Geraint alluded to earlier, just absolutely fucking opened up a million yeah. opportunities for all of us to point out. Yeah, you have That's only just point. started. You didn't <laughs> give a fuck about child poverty before, did you? <laughs> it's like waking up now and being like, hey, I'm starting to believe that privatisation is bad. 40 years <laughs> into the devastating effects of it. like Fergal Sharkey. Yeah, yeah. Well, many such cases in later. We need, we need yeah. to get Angela Smith's political allies elected to stop the privatisation of water. Yes. Good one. Stop the, stop the water going a funny tinge. I'm sure someone's already made that association. But I'll keep making yeah, so, it. She should never nah, sure nah, I'm again fearless original. Calling her this, both a racist and a water lobbyist. <laughs> this is a real... Uh, this, this is comedy without a net. If they ever make the really stupid decision to do like a prequel to the Mad Max films that shows how the world got that way, they should just have like Angela Smith style villains. Yeah, that's absolutely. why they wouldn't like do that. It would probably make a really boring film. Certainly, set it in Ilford <laughs> South, that'd never yeah. be boring. Instead of all the the Mad Max vehicles, it's the Gapes Mobile. Yeah, oh, they, they, they uh, should they should have cast him as Baron Harkonnen. Fucking hell. So. Ian Ucci, yeah, going to be doing, I'll plug it again, an appearance on Podcasting as Praxis, where we... That, that's Jack is not Armando Iannucci, you phrased that a bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah me, and, me and Ian Ucci together, we're going to go head yeah. to head, we're going to hash yeah. out the issues. Two giants. Uh, a, a, a couple more might, dodgy might... series and you'll actually be the bigger draw. You know? <laughs> they might not agree on everything, but by God, they respect each other, just like Ed Balls and George Osborne or... <laughs> Rory Stewart and uh, fucking uh, Alistair Campbell or uh, me and Geraint even. <laughs> yes. The the rest is uh, BBC4 comedy. Doesn't yeah. even work as a podcast title or a joke. But I didn't Shit. Well, no, none of those fucking podcast titles work as a joke. The rest is money. <sighs> Fuck off, mm. Pest, and you stupid cunt. How's your band guy? <laughs> Did we ever hear about centrist no. dad again? Like, I, I think they were deeply hurt by the online reaction, which is exactly why you need to keep up that sort of pressure against anyone who tries that sort of shit. Well, again, to plug the RP Archive series this time, I put out a segment that we did last year, the Rachel Reeves at the Shoe Factory article, because oh, yeah. Yeah, a, apparently a uh, Labour are going to put her at the centre of their campaign due to her <laughs> winning say, personality. Her to a shoe factory. They've, that would um, make more sense. Have you see, noticed that they've given Rachel Reeves a makeover, by the way? I'm not going to make disparaging comments about women's looks, but you can see what she looks like yourself and be the judge of whether it has made her seem more personable and uh, human. But I put that fucking segment of the episode out, and at the end, the next bit on the episode was us talking about Robert Peston's centrist dad band <laughs> with, like, some other cunts. Ed Balls was on drums, wasn't he? I think so, yeah, yeah. But I heard the clip of them playing Anarchy in the UK by the Pistols. Ready? Here we go. I am the Antichrist. I am Anarchy. I know what I want. It was so shit. And what, so what for me was like, what made me like, Robert Peston has no right to be fronting any band was in the chorus where, you know, it's like, and I yeah. want to be anarchy. I guess like Steve Jones or whoever does a harmony goes, I want to be. They raise yeah. it a bit. And instead of just singing the lead vocal line, Peston did the fucking harmony with whichever the actual member of the band was singing it. Just a horrible, tuneless God. mess. Like, somebody who doesn't understand how to do a fucking Sex Pistols vocal harmony. <laughs> 
has no <laughs> business being in a fucking band, man. It's not it's not Crosby, Stills and Nash. But, you know, I suppose Brian Eno calls himself a non-musician and he's a great Corbin supporting legend. So let's not compare Brian Eno to Robert Peston. <laughs> <laughs> Peston, actually, the balder of the two, spiritually speaking. Yes, yeah. Do you reckon Brian Eno just like endorses left-wing causes because he, he had to put up with Brian Ferry back in the day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian Ferry, like, oh, Brian, you're so bald. He's like, I'll fucking show you. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, obviously, Brian was not bald when he was in Roxy Music. No. <laughs> he was very, very fucking glam, if you see a picture of him back then. But I was basically saying, because I'm going on podcasting as Praxis to talk about him, I don't know how much we should get into Iannucci. Yeah. I did just check Twitter, and he has not replied again to, you know, our good friend Suitably AL. chastened with one. We've yeah. declared <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, AL lovely went in. Uh, chastened, with his, like, with his typical Smith subtlety, or... yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After getting his original reply sanctioned for being disparaging to Italians and Scottish people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, A up lovely, yeah, just uh, sent a, a, a wonderfully deranged response. <laughs> Who That's even watched be, yeah. that HBO Max bullshit on the spaceship? I did, unfortunately. It was really shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Ianucci has not responded. He has not yet risen to the bait, but maybe he's an early riser. And when I crash out tonight after 15 joints, maybe he'll uh, then pick his moment to... Mm. Strike. A He's a Radio strike. Four guy. They all wake up at like five in the morning, but they just sort of, <laughs> and they're awake like weird people. Yeah, don't yeah. want to miss just a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start your day with the Now Show. The Mitch Ben no, Variety oh, Hour. Now I'm Show. Sorry. R.I.P. I, bitch. Actually, whenever you make the joke about Mitch Ben being all over Radio Four, which was true for about fifteen years, <laughs> he like replies to you on Twitter going, "Actually, they sacked me. I'll have you know." <laughs> Why was it? Was he mean about God? You say, <laughs> nah, Christmas is all bollocks. You're celebrating a little space baby and, and an alien. It was boring enough that like people who listen to lots of Radio 4 comedy and enjoy Radio 4 comedy got fed up with him. He might be just too radical of a centrist. Oh, Some people, uh... are they're radical in personality and it's not appealing to a lot of people who are centrist in both demeanour. It and, keeps seeming like uh, he's he's sort politics. of very vaguely fainting towards implying it was due to diversity, but never actually saying it because it genuinely would kill his fan base of incredibly <laughs> boring liberals who would disagree with him on that. Please, Mitch Ben, go anti woke. I absolutely <laughs> want to see you. <laughs> Uh, a, a triumphal version of Zombie Jesus Chocolate Day, where he's just like, "Yes, Jesus is risen." That's it, Zombie Jesus Chocolate Day. I, uh, I, I, pl- I made them play that on the wrestling stream one week, and it probably did more psychic damage to him here than getting him into wrestling. <laughs> Which is next sick. up in terms of comedians we fucking hate. Josie Long. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm actually announcing that we're hopefully going to have her on the show this week because mm. she's one of the good ones. And uh, yeah. we, I think we she's done some Radio talk. 4 comedy at points as well. So we're talking in generalizations about a certain type of comedy that's common on Radio 4, not literally everyone that's ever been on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll go with that. I'm sure. Some I found out the other day that like think four, of anyone, four but... series of like a Kevin Eldon sketch show that I didn't even know existed. I'm the target audience for that show, and I hate Radio <laughs> Four so much that I did not know it existed. It is. I mean, I don't really meet people who listen to Radio Four. I haven't really met people who listen to Radio Four. There's My no middle ground. To it people either seven. listen to yeah. People either listen to it several hours a day. Or they never listen to it at all and have a visceral response to the sort of tone of it. Like, my mum would never watch, like, mm-hmm. EastEnders or Corey or whatever, but she fucking loves The Archers. <laughs> She's, like, followed The Archers religiously for years. Do you even know what The Archers is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a radio soap. It's, it's a radio it's... soap about, like, a farm or something. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's been running for, like, a million years. It's yeah. been running for more years than it probably has regular listener at this point. Yeah, I just... My mum and auntie listen to it religiously, and that's, like, all I know, really. Wow. Okay, well, anyway, so, yeah, that was a joke about 
Josie being a comedian that we don't like, we're actually... I'm, yeah, we're, I'm we're just lying. trying to plug we, we as like much RP content on this episode as possible. I wanted to <laughs> tee that up. Yeah. You know I got to cast a wry sideways, sideways eye on, on everything. Yeah. Yeah. We're only really laying into Radio 4 because we want to get them to bring in a new broom. When whichever one out of Punt and Dennis it is is on all their programmes dies, they'll need a new star. And who better than Jack Frey and Reed? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's well, a next... backhanded compliment, mate. I'll take it. Uh, next <laughs> up, uh, John Cleese. John Cleese has endorsed the Labour Party. Now, this is a fucking disgrace. Yeah. Like, this is a man who has stuck by the Lib Dems through thick and thin. But, you know, in recent years, I suppose you've noticed a kind of this emergence of a reactionary kind of anti-woke rhetoric in him. And I guess that has led yeah. him towards the far-right Labour Party of Sir Keir Starmer. It's been a steady and consistent drift to the right, hasn't it? From grumbling on Twitter to kicking off on Twitter, giving interviews to like newspapers and that, kicking off about it, to hosting his own show on GB News, to then going even further right and endorsing Keir Starmer's Labour Party. It's, it's, yeah, it's uh, one thing hosting where, where's a show on to GB go News. Even? Yeah. But, so what? It's just he's sharing a platform with Aaron Bastani. What's wrong with that? But then, then he goes and endorses Keir Starmer. That absolutely crosses the line for him. He was campaigning in Western Supermare, wasn't he, where he was born? When I read Python Biography at age 10 or whatever, I was like, oh, that's interesting. John Cleese was born in a supermarket. Take that, Western Supermare. <laughs> you know how Keir Starmer laughs at the mention of Coventry? That's how I feel about Western Supermare. Okay. Coventry. <laughs> Yeah, John Cleese is out campaigning for... I was going to ask, do we know who the candidate is? Because I bet there's some parachuted Blairite dick here. Sorry, where, where did you say he was campaigning? Western Superman. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I you, believe you, I said you. it enough times. <laughs> a supermarket. He's campaigning in a supermarket. It's, uh, uh, you know, because they've got the endorsement of the head of Iceland, so they're trying to <laughs> expand. Western Supermare would be North Somerset and Western Supermare. Oh, no, it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's two I just searched John Cale by accident as I was talking, and I didn't realise what I was doing. The two John but, Cs. Uh, oh, well, so actually... If, if he's talking about the Western Supermare constituency... Wait, 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 when I, just on this topic, when I googled John Cale to look up his discography mm. the other night, the first John Cs that it suggested to me were... Uh, John Cena. Yeah, like correct, that. yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, and uh, Superstar. Exactly, I knew you'd like that. A legendary boxer. And then uh, <laughs> a football player. And then... <laughs> then what, uh, what football player? Uh, no, 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 that was it. I was just, I was just making another joke. Oh, okay, about right, no. <laughs> I, thought it was a, I was trying to think, like, who's John Cena plays football? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the other one. You'll like this you, even you, more. You're playing with fire by, like, touching on multiple topics that I have devoted far too much of my brain to, to <laughs> memorising uh, useless trivia about. Well, this guy, don't worry, this wasn't, like, a Welsh guy or anything. No, you'll like this one even more, actually. The other one was John Crace. Yes, the big dog. <laughs> Speaking of great satirists, people holding power to account, uh, yeah. holding the feet to the fire of the rich and powerful, the guy who writes articles like mm, Big Daddy Starmer, Fuck Me, or whatever it was called, <laughs> Dom, oh, Dom, Dommed by Reckless Daddy Starmer. Or... <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> yes, I do remember. I've tried to forget it, but uh, that was very real and disturbing. You know, it's, it's quite disturbing anyway. But the fact that it just has this sort of slightly sinister grin of his byline photo that he's had forever, like, attached to it, is like, yeah, yeah, this is how my brain works, yeah. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> yeah, so it suggested him before, like, John Cleese or anything. Mm -hmm. John John Crace got, got the nod from Google. Yeah, I, I believe the Please. Labour candidate that John Cleese is endorsing, if it's in the Western Supermare constituency, is a guy called Dan Aldridge, who I am trying to find stuff out about now. Let uh, me guess. Massive Blairite cunt, uncritically, slavishly supportive of Starmer. Uh, he mostly seems to really like Bridget Phillipson off his time. Uh, well, okay. Uh, well, now he could be somebody with an, a, a, you know, a scientist with an interest in AI. But potentially, I think that makes him a massive Blairite because Bridget Phillipson yeah, has he's, long he's, been one yeah. of the most avowed Blairites in the Labour Party. So, uh, case closed. 
Disgraceful. Yeah. John Cleese, reminder, did not back the Labour Party in 1997. He was a Lib Dem through and through. Let me try and find, because this guy's had a Twitter account since 2009. Now, I reckon he's probably deleted everything, at least before the last couple of years, but let me test this. I want to find some proper compromat live on a recording. Yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, dig up the dirt. He has either never tweeted or wiped every single tweet he's done for 13 oh, years. Oh, what's this? Okay, quick, quick, because I've just seen something that's made me furious. There we go. He's got tweets from 2023, but nothing before that. Fucking In coward. fact, nothing from before December 30th, 2023. So he has genuinely deleted 14 years of his tweets. Uh, that was probably point. just all the positive stuff about the Conservative Party. I mean, from 2023, I mean. And... No, no, I just saw a picture of Mike Katz, just my, my favourite guy, Mike fucking Katz, just posted a picture on Twitter of him out with a bunch of Blairite cunts all white, obviously, campaigning for Praffle Noggins. <laughs> They're all out there. There's Miriam there uh, campaigning. <laughs> They're right next to Roland the Rat Mike himself. It's a fucking uncanny resemblance, and it's specifically Mike Katz who looks like Roland the Rat. And there's a guy who looks like Matt from Always Sunny, but if he had a fucking massive forehead... <laughs> Yeah, it's, oh, the, the, they seem to have about 30 Labour campaigners for the country as a whole and, yeah. they just, <laughs> and then they, they just pop up at every sort of Labour doorstep with one or two local councillors three or four if it's like a proper Blairite area they've been wheeling out such mm. uh, legends for their campaigning recently well, K- Kira Lewis big... must just never get off a train apart from like to do the one or two hour you know stay it must be yeah, right. it, it, it if is they funny. did train miles like they do air miles they'd never pay for a journey again like you look at the picture of these anti-corbyn canvases in islington north and it's like yeah you've got a few of them that most of them aren't from islington north though and i I wouldn't even say they're like bust in from throughout the country it's mostly from like other parts of london london yeah or at least very near little right-wing strongholds yeah yeah how the fuck is miriam not a labor candidate already this election i presume she doesn't want to be yet i don't know I, i reckon she'd probably rather have a plum job in like Labour HQ for now or something. I don't Maybe know. something like that, yeah. Put her in charge of compliance unit or something. I feel like JLM is the best kind of practice for that because you're just that's, drawing up reports on people that's the all the time. Of the compliance dobbing unit people at this in. Point, yeah, yeah. A friend of ours says Mike, Kate, Mike Katz looks like an actual slug. Oh, that's another Jim way Bloodworth's of looking at it. going to kill you. Of course, these all these scumbags are out there. Like, just what what risible people? But yeah, they brought Mandelson out the other day, didn't they? That was like the big so, one. Sorry, are you looking at this tweet that Mike Katz has done with like the three photos attached to it? Is that the yeah. one you're working on? Zoom in on the lamppost on the third photo. <laughs> <laughs> So it's There's like a ninety percent chance they've just put that sticker there, but if they haven't, they've seen that and been like, "Hey, let, let's take the photo here to wind up the left." Yeah. So is is that some of the things that like those Israeli campaigners who were like, "We uh, want the government out." I lose track. I lose track. It, it, it seems to be more digging at. I read that little stupid sticker as as a dig at pro Palestine protests. Oh, absolutely. Let me look. Let me have a look. That's what exactly what I meant. Our love is stronger than your hate. Stickers. Let's see. Designer is sharing light with uplifting sticker to counter anti-Semitism. Love is stronger slogan takes its place on London streets and at Sunday's UK march in response to divisive or hateful messages. This is on... Jewish news, not by Lee Harpin, unfortunately. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Klesma Van Shur has been leading uh, Sing for Israel evenings since October the 7th, and one of the Israelis at these Sing for Israel evenings had a friend who made some stickers that said, Our love is stronger than hate. And uh, these Profound. were. Profound. Share- and Jewish news thought they were so simple and effective, they were determined to share them with its readers and um... <laughs> why do they have to make up a bullshit story like that, that is, it's just so... like, hey it's a slogan we thought would work so we printed it up 
And it's like, it's someone who wasn't... Oh, no, she wasn't at the pro-Israel protest. She was just a friend of someone who was at the pro-Israel protest who happened to make these stickers, but basically have like the message that these people are trying to put out she saw the slogan love is stronger than hate at a rally so (laughs) a pro-israel rally she had wanted to contribute in her own way to the effort to combat rising anti-semitism in the capital began printing stickers she also enjoys dancing and big earrings light and joy are what Ivor goldberg sheer is also creating his sing for israel evenings are as he puts it proving helpful and therapeutic. Uh, Anyway, so they make sure throughout this article not to link that woman explicitly to supporting Israel in any way, but I think you can pretty obviously read between the lines there. (laughs) Nah, I'm sure she's just completely apolitical on the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's grim, isn't it? (laughs) Oh, is that Joshua Garfield, that fucking... (laughs) <laughs> I'm not Tom sure Watson's I know what... son, I'm the lark sure. in spring. I'm not sure I know what Joshua Garfield looks like. Or I can remember. Oh no, I, yeah, I vaguely remember. I, I know. <laughs> Have I mean, you not I, seen I, the I, video I, I... of him looking so smug after he says that shit little mic drop thing? I think you're confusing him with the cat Garfield. Uh, they, they both like <laughs> no, lasagna a great cats. deal. You're thinking... no. no, no, sorry, that's uh, he's uh, not a cat, is he, Roland? Yeah, well, anyway, what a bunch of dickheads. But hey, I guess it beats bringing out Peter, 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 Peter Mandelson, PD, called PD, you know, as his, yeah. his American friend would call him. Or Margaret Hodge they had the other day. Just, just basically anyone who's in any way linked to pedophilia. Just like good idea <laughs> to keep them, keep them off the campaign yeah. trail. I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying either of those individuals are pedophiles. I'm just saying that the the links they have been are linked to pretty it. extensively fucking documented. Yeah. So Labour's bringing its best to Islington North. They had Neil Kinnock as well, but I, I think we mentioned that in the last episode actually. But yeah, that little sticker really puts a nice little spin on it, doesn't it? JLM campaigning against the anti-genocide MP with their little pro-genocide stickers. Have we got any more comedians and light entertainment figures to shit on? <laughs> um, I'm sure we have. Let me... <laughs> it's just there. Who else did I mention? Oh, oh, uh, Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. The double act. The new members of uh, Kia Starmer's inner circle. Yeah, the gruesome twosome. Uh, yeah. Matt Ford and, that, and that's just Keir Starmer's nipples protruding through his plain white t-shirt <laughs> that is gruesome yeah that's, that's very gruesome ugh, yeah. it's horrifying and it was a plain England shirt wasn't it because he didn't no, 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 have it, the it, gay logo on it it was just a plain white t-shirt normally he yeah. either wears a proper England shirt or a counterfeit knockoff one yeah but he wasn't going to wear that fucking gay shite he, was he he while everyone around him was like wearing a proper England shirt he was wearing just a plain white t-shirt just as tight as the football shirts he wears which is bizarre you right? won't, but you we, won't catch we, him we, capitulating we, we, to the woke mob we, we were trying to figure this out last night and as you know what we eventually settled on was because he's criticised the new woke England flag on the New England kit if you missed this controversy it's nothing to do with the England flag really like on the back of the collar on the England shirt the sort of dark navy blue collar they put a sort of purple-ish loosely based on the England flag design this was claimed by noted knowledgeable football fan Harry Cole at the Sun and some other tossers as woke I can't remember which sports firm does the kits uh, I don't know but this woke company wants to replace the England flag with a new woke England flag and yeah. then immediately just started ringing like Labour politicians like do you condemn the new woke England flag like, <laughs> and yes, obviously Keir yes did. I hate yeah, the yeah. new woke <laughs> England flag the how dare they yeah. change the England flag there's like England kits from 10 years ago or whatever where there's little multicoloured flags weaved on the whole design of the thing like it's not- yeah it's... Well, I, I don't I don't need to wear any of that woke purple crap because I'm already wearing so many mm. purple hearts from all my military service. Yeah, you're a plain clothes England supporter. You, <laughs> you, just, you, you just go to the cities, the matches are in, and start throwing plastic furniture around. You don't care about the matches. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's all about said, the love of hooliganism for you. I'm just there, you know, singing like um, yeah, you're my wonder wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the one man that's in it for the tunes. 
<laughs> yeah, John Davidson was the other cunt. You had Matt Ford and you had John Davidson. And I've thus far got 4,610 likes for a tweet that I tossed do you mean, off do you mean like a John, wank just, just in a to, second. He, he, he's John not Richardson. doing a bit here. He's genuinely... Like, he keeps forget. He keeps confusing bad stand-up comic John Richardson with ineffectual liberal president davidson from decker who <laughs> <laughs> refuses man, to take the measures to protect our country the man starmer wishes he could be like uh, I'm, I'm sorry i'd rub much i'd stick with davidson any day but yeah you're right yes. yeah sorry now i was thinking of uh, pete davidson uh, that, that, that bastard smoked weed around yeah. Louis ck how dare he i mean the, the difference as i understand it is that uh, pete davidson inexplicably gets to shag people day and night, whereas John Richardson very famously now is divorced. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Well, maybe we don't know why he's divorced. I mean, you know, there could... Uh, you know, we know a certain guy in that photo whose marriage seems to be on the rocks mm. because uh, um, he likes to shag women a lot. <laughs> he's not saying who. Could be Matt Ford... <laughs> I don't believe it is. I don't believe it is. I don't believe Matt Ford has ever uh, shagged a woman, but whatever. He's lost a fair bit of weight, hasn't he? I noticed that in one of our. And a fair bit so. of hair. Well, yeah. His forehead, forehead <laughs> stretching yeah. out uh, like a wide open expanse. But yeah, I've thus far got 4,610 likes for this tweet saying, sorry, but John Davidson. Richardson <laughs> getting deeply involved in supporting Keir Starmer immediately after getting divorced is just too good a bit. <laughs> yeah. This seems to be a it, tweet it, with vast popular appeal. It blew up everyone hates centrist light entertainers. Yeah, what was people it you on the called left hate them them, People on the right hate them. You know, old people who watch terrestrial TV lots are just sick of them being on everything. Do you say like government by Rory Bremner or something? No, I, I said government by Rory McGrath, which is a better line, so how dare he misquote me. Yeah, he's probably worse than Bremner, I assume. Yeah, although Bremner's probably more annoying for politics nerds like us, but Rory McGrath was somehow both less funny, and after his career fizzled out, he got done for stalking his ex-wife or his ex-girlfriend, wasn't it? Bloody hell. Well, I'd just like to issue a clarification. I'm not a politics nerd. I'm a music you nerd are a politics who feels nerd. furious about You are also a music politics. nerd. You can be multiple uh, types of nerd and we're both really clear examples of that. Yeah, uh, no, I don't, I, I don't think so. I'm just, uh, I, I, I'm driven purely by hate when it comes to politics. Forget what that sticker said, our love is more powerful than their hate. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> it just sounds like a challenge, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> we'll fucking not see. Not to that specific sticker. We're not just like driven by virulent anti-Semitism. That's not. No, it's a pro-Israel sticker it's i don't give a fuck it's a pro-israel sticker it's not against anti-semitism it's advocating yeah. for murder that's what they're children. trying to imply fuck but it. they are in fact fuck them. like yeah fuck them <laughs> i'm gonna be taking that tack on the doorstep in islington north when i head down i'm gonna be just like, look at these guns. i'm gonna be following them uh the prafo noggin campaigners around like alex ruby is the corbyn campaign i, I don't know I, I think you should just, you should you should just find ruby's address and doorstep him every day really earnestly yeah well he's already had ne to doorstep never let all his neighbors when he before, moved into that like, neighborhood hey i'm here for the jeremy corbyn campaign can i give you some literature what's your feeling on the election and he'll like try and kill you or whatever and then you just come back the exact same time next day act like you've never met him i'll just remove a manhole cover and just get him to chase me over it <laughs> yeah get a series of bald caps and be slightly balder every day you turn up and, or, <laughs> I mean you could just cut a bit of your hair off every day <laughs> that would be but I, I know you wouldn't make that a sacrifice so. I almost but like, cut my hair Happen to figure to, out how bald you have to be for him to be like, well, I won't vote for him, but I'll hear you out that's the key to David Crosby's great song, Almost Cut My Hair he he made the right decision and chose not to. Yeah, yeah. Then then uh, I don't know. Just smoke... still fighting the anti hippie wars of the. <laughs> the <laughs> does smoking 60s. a lot of crack make your hair fall yeah. out? No, I, I think he'd already started. I, I, I using can't it. say I've really studied the <laughs> detailed effects. No, no, he Crosby was either balding. in theory or in practice. Crosby was balding way before he started hitting the pipe. R.I.P.
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, have we got anyone else on the list who we wanted to get through? Um, <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I wanted to stop around. Oh, yeah. Anyway. So, we, even though it's topical tonight, we're kind of skipping over Marina Hyde. Yeah. We're, we're looking to touch on that more in a future episode. Fuck. Uh, but they're on the Kermode and Mayo show, and I just want to highlight that. That was Simon was that Mayo's what they were on? <laughs> I, no, I, I, no. In fact, no. I don't. I, I think I think that's some false news. I think I've got confused there because Simon Mayo was one of the people quote tweeting it like, "Yeah, good honor, love Marina Hyde." Yeah, uh, but Simon Mayo is just a big fucking tedious Blairite ultra, and always has been. Yeah. What is, who is this Johnny Geller? Who is this cunt? Literary agent. Yeah, it, it's all like proper corporate arts people saying, like, yeah, it's actually good that the corporate arts funding stuff happens. I, of course, you're personally making money off it. There's some guy, I think this was just some guy, so I'm not going to like dig it up or name him or anything. It was just like, oh, well, the tragic fact is that all these events and all these cultural things need funding. And the only people prepared to fund it that have the sort of capital and a need for exposure are people like Bailey Gifford and people like banks and all these slightly shady companies. And I'm like, Thatcher's won. Thatcher's completely yeah. won because it's not, it, it, it counts on the guy that where the, the guys phrased it, that he just could not conceive of state funded culture. It's like, fucking amoral. Like, like yeah. most countries in the world do. And like we did for most of our fucking modern history. Yeah, yeah. No, we've got to rely on the yeah. arms companies and fossil fuel supporting entities, I'm afraid. There is and to no do otherwise would be political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh my god. Fucking Oh, she was so <laughs> mad in it as well. She was so angry. Yeah. That was what made it extra good for me because I watched it with a sound off at first. And then, yeah. then when I, I was like, okay, I've got to really pay attention. I was like, fucking hell, she is fuming at this. Yeah, not just because she's going to be probably appearing on a, a, a near future episode. Appearing the Long hog in you. years to come. Jo- Josie Long, no, no, <laughs> I'm not talking about Marina Hyde. We're not fucking oh, getting her on. sorry. But Josie Long had the best take on it with, if you are the daughter of a baronet, I do not want to hear your opinions on the arts or arts funding or politics or showbiz gossip. It's not 1750. Yeah, 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 exactly. Fuck, fuck off. But um, yeah, I, I think that John David St- John, John, what's his name? Richardson. I don't watch the kind of crap that this guy is on. It's just shit. It's just fucking shit. It's chewing gum for the eyes. It, it's it's uh, frankly for morons the kind of shows that this guy appears on. But actually, no, I I think that John Richardson still has the chance to pull this back to save himself from the brink. Pay attention to my tweet and notice that I basically give him an out there by describing it as a bit. Mm-hmm. That it would be a very funny bit if somebody got divorced and then in a parody of what a divorced middle-aged man might do, got heavily into supporting centrist politics to the point that they started doing Labour Party political broadcasts and became personal friends with uh, Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer. That would be a really funny joke, were he just doing it as a bit. And I say, John, there is still time. Betray Starmer. Pretend that all along you were doing this as an elaborate practical joke. Do a YouTube video about it. My hilarious prank. I convinced Keir Starmer that I was his friend. Ha 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 ha. Reveal all the stuff confided in you about marital breakdowns and the things that might have led to that. You know, reveal all that. And I think your comedy reputation can be salvaged. But yeah, I know we've declared war on comedy today. Some might say that we declared yep. war on comedy a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, we declare we've been war on... passively declaring war on comedy every time we speak or tweet. Yeah. <laughs> we declare war on comedy every episode. Yes. But I do have one final comedy-related item. I don't know if this guy is technically a comedian. I believe he is more of a magician. But the great Michael Crick recently reported that one candidate in Islington North had been barred from running by the Electoral Commission after registering to run in the constituency after changing his name via deed poll to Jeremy Corbyn. And um, 
The oh Electoral God, yeah. Commission apparently got his papers. I thought that it was a Tim Heidecker situation where he just not submitted them on time. Yeah, and fucked up the bit. No, the Electoral Commission actually saw sense, and they said it sounded like, in this prospective candidate's own words, a sham. Um, and I have to say, I agree. It sounds yeah. like a dodgy as fuck thing to do, and I don't think that should be legal within electoral law. <laughs> yeah. When, when people pull it off and it damages bad parties, it's funny. Like when people used to run as the literal Democrats in Lib Dem marginals and cost them seats, that was funny. But in but... this specific case, like Jeremy Corbyn is an independent. So another independent candidate on mm. the ballot called Jeremy Corbyn. I think would probably lead to a considerable yeah. amount of confusion and I think crosses a line into outright corruption and uh, like mm-hmm. attempted electoral rigging and I I think that this person should be um, Yes. What they did was very wrong. Yeah, I think that they're uh, effectively a war criminal. But, I mean, that leads me actually to why would you do that? Why would you want to pull this prank on Jeremy Corbyn. Now I looked at this guy, this shithead's YouTube account that he does with some other guy who I'm informed is in fact a big Israel supporter and basically what they do is they do pranks and so they tricked Katie Hopkins into going to some event that wasn't actually a real thing. That was one of them. They did one on Tucker Carlson. That'll teach her. That'll te- yeah, that's, that, that showed the two of them forever. Uh, yeah. They did one to some anti-vax people, but then you see that they did one to Just Stop Oil as well and that possibly points you in the direction of why they might be doing it to Corbyn. They might be equal opportunity offenders because it's like oh yeah yeah tucker carlson katie hopkins and jeremy corbyn these are all very comparable figures there's not like an odd one out there or something but i guess if you're a liberal who's like no there's extremes on the left and right you might lump corbyn and just stop oil in with the likes of carlson and hopkins i'm trying to find this guy's name he looks fucking cursed. He has a little pin head. Looks like fucking uh, Mayor Pete. You can need to be a bit more specific. What's the cunt's name? Archie Manners. They're all Archies. <laughs> like <laughs> YouTuber. Uh, you're not, I'm not. I'm not trying to dunk on like left wing Archie that we all know. <laughs> but there's a lot of posh Archies around at the moment, and I don't like it. We need to have a moratorium on Archies until we can figure out what yeah. the hell is going on. YouTuber, magician, and presenter. Magician was the red flag to me, yeah. you have to say. Ultimately, <laughs> you might as well um, call yourself a... <laughs> yes. Big sip of tea. So basically, he said, Disappointed to tell you that I changed my name by deed poll to Jeremy Corbyn and tried to stand in Islington North against Jeremy Corbyn, but my papers were rejected on the grounds it was a sham. And then Michael Crick said, gosh, it seems like another person called Jeremy Corbyn tried to stand in his seat, but were disqualified for incorrect form. And he says, this was me, Michael Crick. My name is legally Jeremy Corbyn, but I was disallowed. Okay, well, look forward to the video, mate. I bet it's hilarious. Yeah. I wonder what kind of hilarious prank they're going to try and do now to, like, save the bit. Because they're not going to let this go, are they? No. They're going to try some other angle to fuck with Corbyn. We need to find Compromise. all the worst centrist dangers we can possibly think of and be like, hey, did you know Jeremy Corbyn's got a second home here? And like, show him on the electoral <laughs> roll or something. Like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, new freak to keep a watch on. Um, yeah. I don't really want to address that profile of Morgan McSweeney now, actually. No, I think we've gone no, on too that, long. That needs that was, a deep dive, I think, if we're going to cover it. That was an interesting piece. Yeah, fucking terrible one. Yeah. But, yeah, I, th- I think that probably does us for now. I think we've uh, we've hunted all the ducks. We've, uh, it, we've got all our ducks in a row, you could say. Maybe that's where that phrase comes from. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I know people confuse us with Chapo because of all the success. If, uh... If friends of the show at Guido Forks are to be believed, it's maybe cucks in a row whenever they have Labour conference. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. Let's just end on a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little smoking gun from Guido Forks. Um, so it's well known that Victoria Starmer has not been seen in public for, what, 46 days or something? 
Um, in that region, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's not that long. I get. I don't think I've been out in public in forty six days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pod- podcasts run is... on a different scale. Like, Keir Starmer's we wedding ring. Just like hibernate for a week at a time now and then. Yeah, Keir Starmer's wedding ring has been missing for a lot longer than forty six days, and uh, yeah, just roughly so three years, I believe. Yeah. Rumors have swirled for longer than forty six days, and. Our great friend Paul Staines at Media Guido, or whichever one of his cronies was writing it, recently wrote an article asking why Victoria Starmer is not on the campaign trail. The Daily Mail has now reported on this. It's now followed the Telegraph in doing so. And basically the official line is that Starmer doesn't want his wife and kids out on the campaign trail to protect the kids and... By the way, you read this thing about Keir says, my only fear is the impact that it's going to have on them. That's why we never name them in public, never have a photo shoot with them. I want them to be able to go to school and have their own lives unaffected as much as I can by what I'm doing. The only thing that sort of keeps me up at night, sort of keeps me up at night. So you know, he actually just, <laughs> he's out like a light anyway. Sort of keeps me up at night is worrying about my children. Okay, so... We obviously know that Starmer, the minute that his polling starts to slip in number 10, will 100% start wheeling his kids and wife out for voter opportunities. Yes. Or, well, if the latter is something that he can do at that point, he will absolutely do that with his kids, and you can take that to the bank. We've all seen it, you know, in Veep, in every every portrayal of a cynical politician, every real-life account of some cynical politician where they make these promises to their family about John McCain, you know what I mean? Like mm. they make these promises to their family about how they're going to do a certain thing. They're going to keep them out of it. They're not going to take a certain stance. And then when it gets to the crunch, obviously yeah, we know what Starmer's like with his pledges, don't we? And I believe that he is a man of such poor character that he would extend that to his own children Anyway, Guido thinks that's a load of bullshit. (laughs) Guido says, Labour sources suggest there are various reasons for Starmer's insistence on privacy for his family. As the Telegraph declared this week, come what may, the spotlight will be on dot dot dot. (laughs) So very elliptical last sentence there, but multiple Labour sources appear to be telling Guido that there is more to this story more to why Starmer doesn't want his personal life in the limelight. And ultimately, who are we to distrust the good people at Guido Forks? Yeah, I mean, when have they ever got it wrong? Well, I mean, ultimately, we know that one of the purposes that they serve in British journalism is that they say the things that the more respectable journalists are scared to say and they make it okay. Like, for example, General Pinochet was good. Uh, lots of British journalists think that most of them don't say it. Well, now they do. They, 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 they uh, shifted the Overton window. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, just wanted to get that in. Just uh, planting the seeds there and so forth. I think that's enough. Yeah, that should be fine. Get another brief uh, episode out quickly. And it keeps us flexible then to record more if guests pan out. Yeah, and I'm going to talk to Josie about arranging one. All right, cool, everyone. Starmer out. Yes, yeah, Starmer out. Getting out. Just as a little addendum to this episode, Victoria Starmer actually did appear in public like the other day. Very shortly after all this media focus on why she wasn't there, she showed up at a meeting of Starmer's CLP to pose with him for a photo. And then he was in the next debate last night with, as Guido pointed out once again, no wedding ring on his finger. I just think it's very, very funny. But I kept saying... Starmer has no real principles on this stuff. The minute that the heat is on and he feels like he has to wheel his family out to be a proper politician, he will do exactly that. And lo and behold... Anyway, uh, look forward to giving that guy the biggest majority of all time on uh, July the 4th. Can't wait.